The growing calls across the nation to defund the police. To end policing as we know it. Off the charts violence in New York City. 11 people shot in just eight hours on this is Sunday. About the police officers, officers who every single day put on that uniform and they run towards danger when we run away from it. Guns up, a giddy up. Another episode of the Failure to Stop podcast coming at you right now, actually live. Live on uh, my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Mike the Cop, or facebook.com forward slash real Mike the Cop. And I'm joined by, man, my gorgeous, um, smarter, the... Uh, I don't know, more copy cop than yep. I could have ever been, uh, ever was. Better okay. father, better man, yep. uh, better citizen. Uh, I don't know what else to, good to say about uh, Eric Tanzi. Official, underscore, official. <laughs> Those here. are all the things. Those are At all the things. At least. Lois says, howdy, Mike. Hey, Lois. Good to see you. If you wonder... I know if you're if you're just listening to this along in your car somewhere, I'm not just randomly making up Lois out of out of nowhere. No, there Lois is a real a real fan who's watching live live on the Failure to Stop podcast with my radio voice. What's your radio voice, Tansy? Let me hear it. You've had way too much Cardo Max this morning. Woo! You are, you uh, are you are you are up here, baby, dude. You the are- Cardo Max stuff, legit. Like and yeah, yeah, they're a sponsor, and so I am drinking it right now. But the crazy thing is, I I haven't had the energy one. I've been having the immune booster, which doesn't have caffeine. I don't think uh, it's got like different roots and stuff in it, <laughs> like uh, and plants and whatever. But it's freaking awesome, and it gives it does give me energy. And I've been having it every day, and I love it. Legit, well, it's really I legit it's really funny. Is love that- it. A lot of Navy SEALs kind of have like this hippie gene inside of them. It's oh, like really? a weird hippie warrior kind of gene. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know a few of them, and they all have very hippie tendencies. Hmm. So when Sean Matson, former Navy SEAL, invented Cardo Max, and I was reading all the, I was like, okay, all right, he's got the, uh, <laughs> got that, he's got that hippie gene buried got somewhere that hippie gene. down inside of him. Maybe it's a California gene. <laughs> Could be. California, they just uh, decided, they voted to stay commie. Uh, with uh, the Newsom recall, or did they? Or was it stolen out from under their feet with all the mail-in ballots of dead people? The rumors, right. the rumors were that seventy thousand people showed up to the polls who were already informed that they already had voted. It's like, well, that's impossible. Yeah. I, I just yeah. showed up, um, so who knows what's going on? Who threw? Who threw the poop? Says, hey, Mike, first time catching a live stream. Thanks, man. We got two hundred people uh, watching us right now, uh, and hopefully more. Smash, smash that share button and. Uh, Tell people about us. And someone said, Sheriff Ivy in Brevard, where you live, is a badass. And heck, yes, he is. And we're going to talk about today's topic is uh, sparked off by the recent ambush. What Really, Tansy, would you call it a double ambush? <laughs> like the situation turned into a double ambush. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, weird. I mean, it, it's a, it was a firefight. And, uh... There was a firefight. I mean, the guy, well, we'll watch the video and we'll watch the breakdown, but I mean, that guy definitely, he knew what he was doing that day. And, yeah, he, uh, he, he had a plan. Um, so we'll, we'll talk, we're going to talk about the Brevard County uh, ambush that happened and we'll, that, that will spark off the conversation about uh, some of the things that we even touched upon when, when Tansy became the most hated man on the podcast uh, the last week. Yeah. He, is, he is the most hated man on this show. Uh, I came out squeaky clean. Uh, <laughs> Tansy's, you know what? Tansy's learning what hate. I I I told I told you last week. I'm like, bro. Like, I post stuff every day. Every every post that I make on the interwebs, someone is going to say something negative about me to me or about what I said. So I just don't barely even pay attention. Like, I sleep the same at night no matter what. But it was it was it was cute to watch you get uh, be like, I, wait a second, why do people hate me? I how, why what what happened? I, I just think it's so funny, like how fucking mean people can be, right? Like I, I've never got on the social webs, and like I see something that I disagree with, and it, like if I really disagree with it, and I'm really bored, and I really don't have shit going on, like I'll try to think of something intelligent to say, and, and I'll I'll say it, and I'll articulate it. 
Uh, but I've never just been like, just come right out of the gates. You're a piece of shit. Uh, this week, though, <laughs> here's a funny story. It's so easy to do that is, when you can't get punched in the face back. Oh, man. So this week was it was a rough week for me. Um, we, we did the Tailgate Legends show last Saturday live from UNC Chapel Hill, which uh-huh. if you've ever been to Chapel Hill, it's bougie. It's bougie as fuck. And uh, so I, we just came out of our show on Friday where I was called a left wing nut uh, because I thought <laughs> it was reasonable that a cop should be able to ask you if you have a gun in the car. And we're today's breakdowns will kind of I'll kind of go into it a little bit more on why I, I feel that way, but it's a reasonable argument as well. But I was called a left wing nut, which I thought was really funny. Because and you Saturday, because you basically said you would separate people from weapons and cars, you know, yes. or whatever. And yes, it's just something I said I, do. I didn't do that. So we, no. we kind of like people people took my side different... versus your side, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean every every cop's different. Um, and I don't think any way's bad or or what. I hope everything works out for you. Uh I hope you don't die and get shot in the face on your next traffic stop. I'm just kidding. But uh, so Friday, I get called a left wing nut. Saturday, we're at a tailgate with Drinking Bros Sports. And in the middle of the tailgate, everything's going great. Everybody's having fun, laughing. It's going amazing. This large, overweight woman with a Karen cut, uh, no shit, walks up and she was like, I just researched this whole drinking bros thing. And I saw that you were on Tucker Carlson. I was like, I was not my boss was on Tucker Carlson. <laughs> I was not. On Tucker. And she was like, good old Dan was on Tucker Carlson. Not us. She goes, we're peons. Get out of our tailgate. And I was like, what? And she was like, get the fuck out of our tailgate. If you support Tucker Carlson, you're a racist. And we don't want any of you right wing crazies here. We get are out. tolerant like, here. Do you understand that? <laughs> we are tolerant here. So get out. I said, man, we're tolerant. Do you, do you understand I said, me? I said he was wearing a defund politicians shirt the first time. And he was wearing an APEC. Do you know what I bet? She was like, get out of our tailgate. <laughs> and I was like, so you don't want to have an adult conversation. She goes, get the fuck out of our tailgate. You racist piece of shit. And I was like, oh, the tolerant <laughs> left. So in one day, I've got some right wing dumb redneck with a Civil War fucking goatee. Conservatard. Like he's, he's trying to look like Stonewall Jackson. There's libtards uh, and conservatards, man. With his selfie in his trailer. And you can always tell it's a trailer because you can see the, the, the wood vinyl uh, the <laughs> wall in the background. It's a dead giveaway that you're in a trailer, which is not a bad. It's Don't not got to be so judgy, judge, judge. I just think I would pick a different trailers. place to do my selfie for my Facebook There's page. a lot of nice double lines um, out there, man. Hey, listen, I don't trailer shame, but Jesus, don't make it your profile picture. Have some pride in yourself. Um, Maybe he likes those know. walls. He does, I guess. But uh, so I'm a left wing nut from him. And then the opposite Karen on the other side, I'm a right wing racist. So really, I think of what it is, is just that anybody that's really, really attached to their politician is just a real dumbass on either side. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we lost somewhere along the way. Lost the idea of principles over politicians. Uh, that's diversity sucks. of thought, critical thinking. I don't know. APAC baby, APAC. Um, yeah, well, guys, thank you for tuning in. And if you're driving somewhere, or you've got your your uh, Raycons in, and you're listening to the show, whatever you're doing, thank you. Uh, we crossed a thousand ratings on apple podcast which as you, got, you obviously if you're listening to this you know because you're listening on apple podcast spotify iHeartRadio, wherever you're listening you can listen all over the place but when it comes to ratings and marketing a show and um you know exposure to a show then apple podcast is still sort of like that's where kind of the business is done and so you guys have Shown up in force, the Wolf Pack has just flooded Apple Podcasts with ratings and reviews. And we always, each and every week, we want to acknowledge you guys and just say thank you so much. Uh, if you've been getting merch, like I've got, I've got the stab and grab. I was so happy. This is my favorite one so far is the stab and grab tea at failure to stop.com. So thank you so much to that. Uh, Andy, do we have uh, some, some of these reviews to, to check out? So we like to highlight some of these. Uh, five stars from last row Lopez says 69 arrests. I've been arrested 60 times, 69 times for smuggling booze into college football games. Recently, I tell the cheddar baked biscuits that throw the chains on me about this podcast and they let me go. Anyway, I have no idea what the show is about because I'm a severe alcoholic, but it's gotten me from getting waxed in the clink a few times. So 10 out of 10 recommend Tansy's also nice to look at. So that's a plus. Yeah. That's how I opened the show. I, I complimented you on your looks and that's the reviewer. 
recognizes the same thing. So, hey, you don't have to listen to the show as long as we're helping you stay out of the clink. We're happy. You know, that's what matters. Big Red 1996 says, best podcast ever. I currently work in a maximum security prison as a patrol canine officer where every day is like walking into another world. But now I'm on my way to the police academy and can't be any more excited to start my next path in law enforcement. But this podcast is great. I listen on my way home from work to relax and stay awake. This podcast is like finding two inmates in a cell, high, drunk, and ready to fight. You don't know how it will start or end, but you know it's going to be a good show. Anyhow, I can't wait for more episodes and more times a week. Keep up the good work. And Tansy, when you all do the show together from a ghost bed, protect your dung hole because it seems like Mike has a hard on for you. Um, oh. uh, I mean, that's, that's good advice. Always protect your holes. Well, you, you always said that you would be, you'd be the giver. So I, I will if, protect my bung hole. You know, a gun, gun to my head. I've got to, I've got to make a choice. Then, you know, that's the route that I'm taking. But, uh, Let's not. Let's hope it never comes uh, to that. Boston Joe says uh, Tansy can thank the cameras for looking good in real life. And well, I'm not sure that that's what your mother said <laughs> last night, Boston Joe. Mm. All right. What are, what's next? Five stars. Paul Rum says this ain't no fake cop TV show. They are the real deal. Mike Lacey and Eric Cagney are female police officers in New York City. The women are partners and friends, but they lead different personal lives. Cagney is a single career-minded woman, while Lacey is a married mother. In addition to going after the bad guys, the ladies have to combat sexism in the male-dominated workplace. Mike the Cop stars as Mary Beth Lacey, and Eric Tanzi plays the part of Chris Cagney. <laughs> uh, oh, God. That was different, but hey. <laughs> uh, Paul has a podcast called Drum, Rums and Drums. Oh, Drums okay. and Rums. Drums and Rums. Uh, it's a, I'm, I'm a big rum guy. I'm a big rum nut. So yeah, you are. I like listening to his, his podcast. Uh, he interviews a lot of uh, historians and rum manufacturers and producers. And awesome. If you're into rum, it's a good podcast. There you go. Go go check it out, you rum nuts, you. Was that it or we got any more? One more. Uh, oh. I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. Hold on. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I just spread COVID everywhere. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. All right. Five stars. Number 1,000. This is my attempt to be the thousandth review. If that happens, I don't think Lightfoot could even get this chubby to go down. You guys rock. Keep it up. Yeah. Good job. Uh, I, I don't know if you were the thousands, but let's just say you are. Let's. I mean, I don't know how to track it. There's no, there's no way to know. We can't so respond you, either. You know what? And Yeah, we can't reply to the comments. So I'll tell you what. You get a free stab and grab T-shirt. On me, as soon as uh, uh, what's her name gets her shirt from you, Amber. As soon oh, as I, yeah, I can send it out now. I as just soon as as soon as you send her her shirt, I don't know if she's in the comments today. I haven't been paying much attention there, so she's she's not here. She's she's just given up now. She never got the shirt you promised, so she's given up. I made her cry. You lied to her about a shirt. It's over. Um, <laughs> but but Ahosh Ahosh whatever your name is. Send proof that you sent that review, and I will send you a free stab and grab T-shirt. I'll send you the one I'm wearing right now. It'll have my musk on it. It's going to be beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric, tell us about the Hump Day Hero this week because that was a pretty cool. It was a pretty cool one. I loved the writing on that. By the way, it was a it was a literary masterpiece that you put together. I had to do it because um, this guy's living the dream, Officer Becker. Uh, was living the dream. He was on a, a routine patrol. And by the way, if you want to read more about this, go to our Facebook and our Instagram. If you ever want to nominate somebody, make it cool, make it interesting. Don't nominate somebody for the same bullshit over and over again. Yeah, um, something cool, man. Send us to the DMs. I only did this one because I know I can make a lot of jokes. Not that it wasn't a heroic deed, but I knew I had a lot of jokes when I read this one. So, um, but uh, old Officer Becker was on a routine patrol when he saw some black smoke. That's not a racist uh, term there, black smoke. Somebody wrote in the comments, why does it have to be black? Uh, and then another firefighter chimed in, which I thought was really cute. And he said, because if it was white smoke, it would indicate that there was water being put on it. Therefore, first responders would be there. So if you see black smoke, nobody's gotten there yet. And you should probably go check it out. And I was like, damn, that was pretty awesome. Wish I was a firefighter. Uh, but anyway, so this officer, Becker, he sees the black smoke. He goes in the direction, sees that a house is on fire. He starts to approach the house. It's completely engulfed in flames. The garage door comes up halfway, kind of leans in. This woman's inside, and she's like, my husband, he can't get out. He's elderly. He's like in his late 70s. And so he gets her out, and then he yells for the guy, and the guy is yelling back, but he says he can't move. And so Becker's got to go, and he's got to make that decision. The house is fully engulfed in flames. He goes in. He grabs the guy. He drags the dude out, and he saves the day. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's every cop's dream 
to be mm-hmm. a firefighter for for one day. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's cool. No gear, none of the fucking spacesuits. He didn't have to <laughs> wait for them to fucking drag out the hoses and all the policies and the bureaucracy. And this is a cop that just said, you know what? Guns up, giddy up. Guns up, giddy up. Failure. He can't stop, won't stop. He's Let's going, save the fucking right day. In. He wolf packed up. Went in. So that is our ghost bed hump day hero. Did you ever uh, did you ever go into a fire with no spacesuit or anything like that while you were working? No, uh, I went to a call where three of the officers did, um, and I was like, "Well, that's three. That's enough. I will stay right out. <laughs> I will stay right out here and um, monitor the situation from outside." Yeah, I uh, I never I showed up on fires, different stuff like that. I never never was in a circumstance where it was required me to go in. But then I I got like coworkers of mine that have done it like three times, like where they just happen to be in these crazy situations, like apartment buildings and whatever else. And hospitalized my buddy Nate's been hospitalized like twice for smoke inhalation from going in and trying to be the freaking hero uh, with no space suit. Uh, it's, it's nuts, man. Uh, I, never, people, I never had the opportunity though. Yeah. I had a partner and um, there was an apartment fire. This is the one I was talking about. And uh, I had arrived on scene and she had already went inside and did the whole, like, get the baby from the top floor and help lower it down. Um, not the top floor, but, like, the second floor. Yeah. Lower the baby down out the window. And then she retreated back out. Well, there's this other officer who's just notorious for being a piece of shit. And he's that he's that officer that shows up last of the calls but then collects the glory. And we were all standing there. And he was like, she needs help. And I'm like, nope, she's good. She's great. That woman's already climbing down the gutter. She's handing the baby over. <laughs> the gutter. She's getting out. She's good to go. She's shimmying. Um, you don't climb down the gutter. You shimmy. And, and by the way, this whole fall. thing was like, there was a lot of over theatrics here because the fire was like on the opposite end of the building. So the lady could have just like. <laughs> just gone downstairs. But, you, you know, it's it's like, it's the inner city. And so everybody wants attention. So she's like doing the, you know. Uh, so everything. So this guy runs into the bottom floor he doesn't go upstairs or anything he stands in the bottom floor and he's like are you okay up there do you need anything are you okay what's going on and she's like you know just doing work and then she comes down and she's fine and uh when they write up the report you know of course he ran into the flames and there was fire (laughs) everywhere and he was checking on his binder and so he gets the big award and we all kind of made fun of him because we're like "Eh, she deserves the award you not so much. Oh my gosh, dude! Uh, I I don't know if we've ever talked about this. I know that I've. It's like kind of like it's it's out there on like Mike, the, the Mike the Cop stuff. But I my first gig was uh, in Michigan. I don't know public safety, so it's police and fire. So went to the academy, get get through FTO and all that stuff on the police side, and then they sent me to the fire academy uh, to to have that skill skill set too which uh, was crazy. I mean, like, if you put water on fire, it tends to disappear. So, I mean, it was a very complex uh, situation through, to get through that schooling. But uh, <laughs> I did all that. And I remember, like, the first, like, legit, like, this place is burning down fire that I helped work. I was, like, brand new at the fire thing. So I'm not getting to do – I'm not, like, on the, the attack. Like, I'm not at the front of the hose gripping it. Um, I'm not, I'm not going in like, here's my, I'm not, I'm not going in where, where <laughs> angels fear to tread. I wasn't going into the, <laughs> the flames. I was literally, all I was doing was I was in my spacesuit, changing out people's air tanks and getting water all yeah. for hours though. Right? Like I'm sweating my balls off doing this. And then when it's all said and done, my job is to go in and get these two like hundred pound pit bulls that are have died of smoke inhalation and are waterlogged and weigh now like two hundred pounds each. Drag those out, put them in a bag, put them in the back of a truck, and drive them to an incinerator. Yeah, and it's while, while you were doing that, while you were driving the the dogs out, I can just hear there goes my hero. <laughs> yeah, there was probably there's probably like this epic image of me with smoke behind and i'm just carrying this dead dog Two in dead my arms fucking like, dogs and yeah one your over mas- each shoulder your mascara's running and you- uh i grabbed a. thankfully there was like a gallon size ziploc bag in the truck because it smelled so bad um to have two mm. dead smoke laden dogs i was overcome by the stench and puked my guts up um mm. into a Ziploc bag, and I tossed that into the incinerator as well. So, um, yeah, RIP to those dogs, and that's my fire experience. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm technically a firefighter. 
uh, as well. That certification never expires. So once a fireman, always a fireman. And uh, everybody loves a fireman. Um, you can go to a call. You can save a domestic. You can like save a person's relationship by mediating a domestic and keeping yeah. everybody out of jail. And Change the entire things. course of a child's yeah. life. Yeah. And then like everybody still fucking hates you. A firefighter can come up and all he saves is the foundation of the house. I mean, they have <laughs> fucking blown everything out with water. Everything yeah. is destroyed and ruined and everybody's like, oh, <laughs> thank you. We have a sub sandwich. You're like, you know, do you guys need some Gatorade? Will you marry anything? my daughter? Like Will I'll give her, my- I'll give her to I- you in marriage right now. <laughs> <laughs> when I lived in Florida, I was dating this girl, and they had a um, they had a pool house. They had like a pool, and then they had like a little pool house that had like a bathroom and a changing room and a shower and the whole nine yards. And there was a candle lit in there, and I had went in there and changed my clothes, and I had thrown my board shorts up on the sink next to the candle. And I even said, "Oh, as soon as I get my pants and stuff on, I should probably move that so it doesn't catch my board shorts on fire." Well, I forgot, and like a couple hours later, the whole thing was engulfed in, fl- in flames. Not not like engulfed but like there's smoke billowing out right, of the, right. the room and everything well the firefighters they come in there and they just start bashing things with axes and they flood the whole room out and they rip out the sink and everything they're like we don't know where this fire came from like it seems like it's electrical but we beat in all the walls and we don't see anything that could have caused it and i just kept my mouth shut the whole time, but i'm pretty sure <laughs> that was my boy george son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> well i'll tell you what man working in the department where you're you're both you're working in both capacities I would be driving in a so we didn't we didn't have periods where you were just a firefighter. You're like sort of like you have a couple guys at the station that are booking prisoners and and handling uh, lobby reports and that kind of thing, and they were there to drive the trucks if necessary. But everybody else just kept their spacesuits in the trunk. So whatever. And but when you were driving on a cop car, you'd be getting people like f you man f the police all this stuff and then like but you'd be driving your fire truck around and people are like hi we love you you know like. It's just it was an obvious difference, but the 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 great part about the public safety world is like you could put your spacesuit on. You knew a guy had a felony warrant in this apartment. Well, you just go over there in your spacesuit and say there's a gas leak and everyone has to exit the thing. Out comes uh, Trayvon and uh, oh, <laughs> you throw man. the handcuffs on. <laughs> that should that should be illegal. Mike, uh, come on, that's cheating. Yeah, that was entrapment for sure. Probably it's like but I did deflating it. the balls at a. NFL football game. Uh, I, I love the firefighters. I've, I've always adored them. I never really played pranks on the firefighters. However, the firefighters relentlessly prayed, played pranks on us. But uh, when it snows real bad, we always like lock ourselves in at the fire station and just take calls from the fire station. Um, because in Raleigh, it doesn't snow, but like maybe one week a year. And yeah. then the whole city just fucking goes into chaos and shuts down. Yeah. But I you guys asleep. probably don't have like salt trucks and stuff, right? Like, or no, whatever. no. No, I mean, the whole, I mean, it's, it's mayhem. There's, a half inch of snow can bring the city to its knees. <laughs> it's memes galore. But I was sleeping on the couch and uh, I took my clip on tie off and like set it down next to me. And when I woke up, I couldn't find my clip on tie and they had already taken it outside in a cup of water and froze it into a cup of water. And so I'm like trying to go to this call and like break the ice to try to get my tie out of the <laughs> cup. And I was like, you motherfuckers, man, like that was smart. It's genius. But, uh, I I, we, I never got a chance to retaliate, so yeah, it know. happens. It happens. Uh, anyway, that was our hump day hero. So good job, uh, good living job the dream, saving, baby. Saving someone—that's what they say, right? Cops and firefighters uh, both want the same thing to be. Listen, that hump day hero went out. It got shared like over three hundred times or something like that. That Facebook post. So oh, more whatever than that, you guys I think even it was a lot. Yeah, I mean that lot. was like in the. Fr- I, I don't check every. All, all, so often um but it, it there was like uh, more comments than i could possibly keep up with and then and so these someday heroes they really do get a lot of great recognition so if there is somebody out there and listen don't tell me that he's like patrolled his community faithfully for 31 years and i was like nobody gives a fuck about that he got paid to do that and like i want to i want to hear some shit i want to hear like fucking some really good stories don't waste my time please don't waste give me like time. some real <laughs> heroes folks i want it like it's got to have some it's got to have value some, it's got to have that guns up giddy up fact yeah man yeah. i want to i want to freaking i want to get get roman hard you know what i mean yeah roman.com forward slash wolf wolf pack we've had a lot of subtle sponsor mentions this episode i'm really proud of that um and it just goes to show you it's genuine you know that's fine. well it's cool i i, oh, I really danny natcher says ninety seven thousand nine hundred and thirty eight people were reached by oh, that Danny, post about small. the hump day hero. I love you're when Danny's small. in the house. There you go. Uh, I do. Um, 
we got a lot of uh, we got a lot of comments and messages and screenshots of people who buy the products that we endorse on the show. And it does mean a lot to, to me, especially to see those endorsements because without those endorsements, we couldn't do the show, but two, like, do you know how hard it is to find companies to endorse a show like ours? That's pro police. Yeah. No kidding. So like, I mean, really when these guys are supporting the show, they are truly supporting LEO. They're truly supporting first responders. So that's a big risk for a company to say, to overtly sponsor two, two dudes, uh, saying the things that we say and in the way that we say them. So uh, to, to all of our sponsors that are like the primary ones. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Um, it's truly, truly a big help. And for you guys that don't tune out and you actually like listen to us talk about this, um, I mean, thank you. Thank you, thank you. so much. Then that's genuine. Like we really, I really mean it. Like this is, this is what keeps the show going. Like, I mean, this is why they haven't fired us yet. So <laughs> I mean, it's, it's what's going to take us on this morale tour. Um, it's what's going to get us through DC at cop week to be able to hang out with you and to throw out all this swag. I mean, uh, Mike and I aren't making money, making a whole bunch of money off this. We're reinvesting most of this money back in there to, to help to visit these departments to have all this swag, to do the things that we want to do. So, I mean, from the bottom of our hearts, guys, uh, thank you. And we just hope that we're entertaining enough for you and that you get something from us. Speaking of entertaining, we had put out, you put it out on the Failure to Stop Instagram. I put it out on Mike the Cop yesterday, uh, trying to get uh, (laughs) (laughs) the weirdest things that have ever been found on search warrants. So I have kind of like a granddaddy of them. and I I actually have a very disturbing photo to post if you want your friends to be exposed to this extremely disturbing photo in like a few minutes when we get to it, uh, share the share share the stream up right now. Definitely share this podcast with somebody. You get you're gonna have to. I don't know where you're gonna see it other than this video. And honestly, it's gonna. I'm risking YouTube stopping the stream. I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how they. If they if they have screen reading software that picks up on the shape of penises. We're going to have a problem. I don't know. I I think as long as it's not a real penis, we're good. The whole thing sparked, though, because we put this on our uh, failure to stop Instagram. Uh, Make sure you go over there and follow us because we try to engage. And I actually did not post everybody's answers because when I posted this question, so many people responded. And it was like 99.9% dildos, which made made me laugh a lot. But I'm not going to flood our Instagram with dildos. But this whole thing sparked because one of my buddies – they they breached a house, they breached the door to a house um, on a search warrant and uh, when they kicked the door in, the man was actively riding a dildo on all fours. He had the dildo mounted to the wall. He was oh, on all gosh. fours, and they were like, "Get on the ground." He's like, "Hold on, it's inside of me." And they're like, <laughs> "Oh no, ease off of it, ease off of it." And he, they were like, "They don't teach you those. They this. don't teach you those commands in the academy. They should have." <laughs> he eases off of this <laughs> massive chocolate dildo, and. Uh, he lays down and, and oh, uh, he, he says, he's like, I was stepping over him and I was keeping my muzzle down on him, you know? And as I step over him, like, he's just like, his asshole was just gaping. It was like, Oh, stop. A stop in real no, life, so. no, mm-hmm. no, yeah. no. Welcome to our world, baby. No. Yeah. I, every, every cop ha- on a search warrant or in a house has encountered a dildo. There's no doubt yeah, about it. It's like, my favorite was uh, finding a dildo in a Bible case. There was a, a Bible case and uh, <laughs> well, I picked the well Bible hidden. case to move it. And I felt something like rattle in there. That was a little bit bigger than a highlighter. And uh, I unzip the Bible case That's and, your... and there is a, you know, a nice good size oh, vibrator, gosh. but you know what? I mean, she's getting the Holy spirit and, oh. you know, Getting a holy orgasm as well, I guess. I don't know about that. Uh, so I, I'm going to read a few of these. Uh, I don't know if you have any answers to that question on on our Instagram to read, Tansy. We can kind of uh, ping it's pong all dildos. this back. It's all the same. It's all the same. Yeah, I mean. You can go to the Instagram and look at it. I well, mean, I'll, I'll catch up on it well later over, today. I, I purposely chose to like leave off all the dildo ones because I'm not kidding. It's like 70% of them are all dildos. That's, that's like what people find. But that's not – I don't think that's super uncommon to exist. It's just, so wow. it's not whatever. But this one, I'm just going to read through a few of these, and then I'll, I'll build to the to the granddaddy of them all. Uh, Twenty dead animals in a house, and only one kitten alive in a locked rabbit cage. Uh, that'd be weird. Oh, you just you submitted this to me, Eric. What you, dildo in a Bible case? What you answered? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm well, looking at it right you, now on my Instagram. You saw it posted, and I felt like saying it. <laughs> I'm one of the dildo bandits. 
I'm one of the dildo dorks. You stole it? You stole Wait, a, the dildo dorks? <laughs> you, are you you said you called yourself a dildo bandit. Is that a Freudian slip? Are you out there like do you have no, a, I, do you have a collection yeah. of ones that you got on search warrants sitting somewhere I, in some weird room in your basement? I will post pictures or of in the woods dildos. next to your house. Yeah, I'll post me with dildos on Instagram. I've got lots of pictures of me laughing while putting dildos into evidence. Oh, my gosh. I to, but listen, when I did search warrants, we did search warrants every week. Um, one of my favorite things to do is I would take the dildo or the dong, if they were a piece of shit, like if we already had the evidence that these dudes are definitely guilty of why we did this search warrant, I would then take said dildo that I found or strap on or whatever it is, and I would take it down to the most public area of the house, and I would put it like on the coffee table or I'd set it <laughs> on, like on the kitchen table. So when everybody like else came oh to the house gosh. to like clean up, they would see this like massive uh, strap on whatever whatever they kind of came. Yeah, have. yeah. I never I never really found weird things. I know that um, I I said this on on my Instagram yesterday too in the story. It was like. I watched a a new a newer cop uh who also was probably just naive about life in general in it th- this place was not a clean duplex let's just put it that way right and uh he went in, he went to the back room which was doubling as an F shack and he's like what what's this and he picks it up barehanded no gloves and it's mm. 100% a used condom and I'm like oh, yeah. bro what are you doing and he's like, oh, oh, and I'm like, uh, what? what? Uh, yeah, new, yeah, new cop, tunnel vision, uh, yeah, gross. Someone says, here's a couple of good ones. Uh, a weird one that a suspect he found the suspect wearing a robe, and who ultimately farted in my face. Uh, there's, Ooh. there's got to be more of a story. How do you end up under his robe where he's farting in your face? There's, there's more to the story there. Um, a skinned dog head in the freezer. Oh, skinned dog head in the freezer. Was that a? Was that the house of an Asian? I don't know. A complete a little, suit little of dog and rice. Complete little suit of medieval armor sitting on the couch. <laughs> is that a thing though? Do Asians? Is that just like a? Is that just like a, a weird joke? Or do Asians really do eat cats and dogs? Is that a thing? Or is that I'll just tell you this. I was up? in I was in Seoul, Korea in 1988. And I was walking around and we we were there. My my mom was competing in the Paralympics. And so we were there for like two weeks. And we met a, another American there that lived there. And as we were walking down the streets, we saw like a wagon of puppies. And we're like, oh, you know, I was in man, junior high at the time. And right. so like, oh, hey, look at the dogs. And the the American that was sort of like our guide for the day, like hanging out with us was like, Oh, that's somebody's like, that's somebody's dinner. Oh. So this was in, in Korea in the 1980s from someone that lived there. So that's all I had to go on. Yeah. So, so the, old, the old dog and rice is real. I don't know. You know, um, let's see. Hey, I would eat it though. I would be down with it. I would eat it. <laughs> I don't care. Like I, 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 I we eat squirrels, we eat dogs, we eat, no, we don't eat dogs. We eat squirrels. We eat deer. I would eat a dog. I would eat a cat. 100%. Yeah, I mean, if it came down to it, right? <laughs> Not even if it came down to it. If it was on a menu and you could have, like, cat noodle, I'd be like, you know what? Shit, let's give that a – I like squirrel. I, I We eat squirrel and squirrel gravy. My kids love it. And we do it, you know, two or three times a year. Our kids shoot a couple squirrels and we eat them. I, 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 oh, squirrels. squirrels I've had squirrels. Yeah, that's fine. Squirrels can't be that much different than a fucking cat. I don't know. If anything, squirrels more gross than a cat. <laughs> I would totally eat a, a cat on the record. Yeah, well, I I, I believe you. Uh, let's see. Moved his car. We left the turkey. Uh, man, there's a lot of a lot of dildos. Um, I would eat I would eat Boston Joe's dog. Oh, ooh, gross! A baby rattlesnake in a bucket on the kitchen table. No warnings. Just heard the rattle. Oh yeah. What? Yikes. Uh. Yikes. People are uh, so weird. <laughs> let's see. A hidden secret room for satanic worship. Oh, we all need that in our life. Was that in Hillary Clinton's basement or? Probably. Oh, bath, a bathtub completely full of crap because the toilet we uh, was broke and full. Oh. Oh. Gross. Yikes. Uh. 
handcuffs from a partner's agency. They had his badge number on them, so they were returned to the owner. So I had this too. People said yeah. they found their old badges. I'm like, what? Was this guy visiting one of the past like frequent flyers here off the record? What's going on? How do they have his badge like or handcuffs like that? Like, wait a second. What? I I was searching a car once. So we had those little tiny flashlights. Uh, our department doesn't have like the big giant ones. We have like the little tiny LED flashlights. And uh, I was searching a car once, and I was looking up underneath the seat, and I pulled out one of our departmental issued uh, flashlights. And I was like, hey, man, is this your flashlight? And he's like, nah, ain't my flashlight. <laughs> he's like, I don't know where that came from. And he's like, is it a nice flashlight? I was like, no, nah, it's a piece of shit, but it's ours. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Some dude was some dude was trying to get up under there, probably trying to get the last little crack rock that was in there from the last cop that searched that car, and he put his flashlight down and reached his arm in there, and they got the crack, got super excited. Yeah, baby, I got my rock, <laughs> and uh, forgot his flashlight right under the seat. Oh my gosh, um, yo, there's a uh, man, two Korean hookers. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking Wait, of, like, speaking are of they Korea. Korean hookers or is this like something being like sex traded? Because then, um, I, that story, yeah, it's I don't know, man. Dram- like a lot more dramatic, a lot quicker. Yeah, a lot of people saying check your DMs or whatever. Like they sent me photos, um, a wad of cash in a vacuum cleaner bag. That's actually not too unusual, but I mean, you you would want to look in places like that for for the money. But Annie, can you throw up this other one, guys? Get ready, oh, get ready. The creme de la creme. Oh, you were able to blur it. Yeah. And save us a little bit. You're, you guys are going to get the idea anyway. <laughs> and I'll t- <laughs> let me let me tell you what this is. I, the the cop sent me the picture and says, uh, they thought this would scare the popo away. Like so, found it. He said teddy bear with a. This is a teddy bear you're looking at with a strap on and a bra. It had a a fake butt. Um, attached to it somehow with a hole with a vibrating butt plug. It's, it's it looks her, like an IED. It looks like something that you would move it and it explodes. I don't know what was going on here, but it's nothing that I would ever want to see again. Uh, so you're welcome. If I had to look at it, you had to look at it. I love how they put the lay on there. <laughs> So, do you think somebody so, was fucking that thing? A Hawaiian theme. I dude, I don't even want I don't know. It looks like it would ha- it had already been blown up. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna treat my girl right. I'm gonna put a lay on her. Oh my gosh. All right, like let's get that out of here. This is this is terrible. Uh, I can't stop looking at it. I'm <laughs> um yeah, body odor cigarettes mixed with piss. Brian Binky says it. Yeah, there's uh uh, oh, t- hey, Tansy, you have a fan in the comments. Texas Gunslinger says, I'm a Second Amendment absolutist, and I have no problem with an officer securing a weapon during a traffic stop. And I would, I would say that most people don't. I would say that most, most gun owners would have no problem if an officer says, hey, I would, just feel, more, I would feel more comfortable with this. Like, it's, it's not a push-come-to-shove issue. Like, most of the time, there's no problem between cops and Second Amendment people at all. It's, it's no, virtually no. a made-up problem. Um, so... Yeah, you know. Yeah, made up by made up by you know yahoos like that uh, who are like, oh, you left wing nut because you you think it's a reasonable request to separate me from my gun. Fuck you, states' rights, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, so before we dive into the Brevard County ambush and related conversation that will ensue from that, who do we want to thank as our sponsor and let people know about? Oh, today's show is brought to you by GhostBed, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, we love GhostBed. Matter of fact, we just got a text message or a, a message that somebody bought a GhostBed with the adjustable base. They were super excited. So it's the most expensive. I mean, like the 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 most expensive bed they've ever bought because they've bought nothing but cheap beds their whole life. And so they got super excited about our show. They used the promo code. He got the adjustable base. His son liked it so much. Who's a teenager that he, his son ends up coaxing him into buying another one. So he bought two ghost beds, um, using our promo code. And he was really excited about that this week. And so, uh, I always get pumped up, man, when people are, people are pumped, but we love ghost bed, um, because they've been a sponsor for the last five years of drinking bros. We are part of the drinking bros network. Um, and, my favorite part about GhostBed is that they are made in the good old USA. 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 U- uh, you, dang it. You told me to go how faster. Many, how many weeks in are we on this? You how keep many weeks? Is, this is like week it. 12. 
Oh, it's God. 14. It's on the screen. It says 14, episode 14 on the screen. 14 weeks, and we still can't get a – ready? One, two, three – USA. <laughs> oh man. What do you want uh, me to do? I just I just matched you and then I last week you said I was going yeah, too I know. slow and I got to go faster. I, I can lead a horse to the water. You're setting me up drink. for failure, dude. Every mattress has a 20-year warranty. You can try it out for 101 <laughs> nights, not 99, not 102, 101 nights. If you don't like it, you can easily return it. No hard feelings, but you won't. One of they our favorite will parts be magical nights. <laughs> One of our favorite parts about GhostBed is that each mattress has cooling technology in it. So if you get hot at night, like we do here in North Carolina, this thing is a lifesaver. Look, man. Uh, the Y'all, we get hot here, down here in North Carolina, and we're, we looking, get... we're looking for a bed to make us cool. <laughs> and look, the cooling technology, it's like when you are sleeping on the cool side of your pillow and you mm. flip the pillow. I mean, the you you are mm. sleeping on your pillow and it gets hot and you flip it to the cool side. That's what laying on a ghost bed or having the ghost bed pillows is like all the time. Um, so it really is that whole cooling technology is super clutch. Hey, uh, Tansy, me. I'm down Favorite here in North part. Carolina. I'm out, uh, I'm looking for a bed that I sleep so good. It's scary. You ever heard of something like that? <laughs> uh, so it's supposed uh, to be extra cool. And, uh, you know how the nights get down here. Well, you got, my, your, you got your teddy bear and your makeshift butt plug hole and, <laughs> and you're getting, you're getting warm. Things are heating up. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, I'm just looking to get cool. I'm just looking to cool down and get a good night's rest. You know, anything like that? <laughs> well, Ghost Bed Austin. Well, Mike, Ghost Bed also <laughs> offers bundles, so you can get everything you need. You don't even really have to think about it. You just choose from their four mattresses and then pick your bundle. So whether you just need a mattress or a frame, or you want it all, I want it all, and I, I want, want it, it, it all, oh, and I want yeah. it now. God. <laughs> uh, but you know, if you want everything, like their cooling pillows and the sheets, you can get COVID. The- you can get the best bang for your buck. Right now, GhostBed is offering a flash sale. 40% off GhostBed bundles where you get the mattress and the adjustable base. Or 30% off everything if you use the promo code Drinkin Bros. D-R-I-N-K-I-N Bros at GhostBed.com. Forward slash Drinkin Bros. $35 a month. Zero down. Zero percent financing if you have mediocre at best credit. Again, that's GhostBed.com. Forward slash Drinkin Bros. Made in the good old USA. 15 massage modes. Zero gravity. 20-year warranty. Come on now. Made in the good old USA. Love get it. Get you a ghost bed and get it today. Go on down and get you a ghost bed. All right. Anybody else before we uh, dive in? Nah, let's just dive in. Let's go for it, baby. Let's dive in. Feels like a truck ad. <laughs> Built ghost bed tough. <laughs> <Built. laughs> <don't think> <laughs> Hell yeah. If, if you don't like ghost bed, then you don't like American. If you don't like American, If you got yourself you. a large Karen, Karen uh, counterpart and uh, she's ready to get down to it, then you need to be you need to get yourself a ghost bed. It'll hold up to the tension. Put her on um, a ghost bed. I don't know. This doesn't make any sense. Uh, I can't. I don't know if I can say that liberals aren't allowed to sleep on ghost beds because I don't know their position on that. But I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously they can because I'm a left wing yeah, nut and you I sleep left on a ghost wing bed every freaking night. psychopath. So, so we're good. Um, you Chad, you liberal Chad. Uh, <laughs> should we? Uh, when do you have the date that this incident happened? I, I know it was it was within the last week, right? Or at least the the video came to light in the last week. If yeah, the, the video did. It, it, um, bu- 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 <clears throat> it's not a big deal either way. I mean, it's recent. It's not like it's this is years ago. All of our no, other no, 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 like years is, ago, like whatever. But, no, this uh, is this is this is recent, and it's deputies Potter's and Toman. I, I I don't know if I'm pronouncing it exactly right. Toman Toman. August thirtieth, it happened. Okay, so recent. Good right. job. And, 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 hey, and the man, video. Look the at video Andy did the first thing days. ever as a producer that was valuable. Besides, get me coffee. I, <laughs> I actually, speaking of which, could you heat some up for me? I'm seriously like in the mood for coffee on my in my failure to stop mug. <laughs> um, you got a failure to stop mug, you son of a dude. Bitch. I didn't I get didn't a leadership mug yet, though. We got to get those things. Um, I didn't. Get, I, I didn't get any mugs. But yet. I did get a failure uh, to stop mug. Heck yeah, Man. I'm drinking out of it right now. Uh, August 30th, deputies Potters and Toman in Brevard County, Florida. Um, they're on a traffic stop, and the lay of the land is that there are three adult males in the vehicle, and there is a two-month-old child in the vehicle. And where the video that I, that I've that I've seen, and we're gonna play it so that if you guys are watching this, as soon as Andy gets back in the room and in the right moment where Tansy says thumbs up, we'll play the the video uh, without commentary. We'll just kind of like let you see it. And if you are listening to the show, 
uh, it's actually pretty intense to even listen to, honestly. But um, you won't you won't see it. But you just come to come to the social medias and uh, and watch it, or you look it up later, and we'll we'll walk through it so you might get a good idea of, of what's happening. But they have <clears throat> two guys. Are, there's two cops. Uh, and there are two people out of the car, which creates an interesting situation, right? Um, one is by patrol car number one. One is behind the, the suspect vehicle. And then a third subject is inside the car in the back seat with a two-month-old. And officer one is back at his patrol car on the side with, su- with the first guy. And thank you, Andy. And then officer two is sort of trying to watch both people, one in the back of the car, one at the one in the car and one at the back of the car. And that's kind of like Well what we have here is we've got a couple of things. We we've got an officer that's been that's trying to do the right thing, trying to be a good community police officer by allowing somebody to stay in the car with their two month old child uh because he was empathetic and he had compassion. Um also while you're wa- about to watch this video for those of you who were so angry that I talked about separating and having a reasonable right of a cop to ask somebody if they have a firearm, what if one of these officers, the first things out of their mouth was, is there any firearms in their car? And then watch for indicators to see if there was. And if we look at the Volusia County uh, shooting that just, that happened not too, not too far from this incident where the officer asked, Hey man, do you have something in the car that I need to know about? And the guy just goes numb. And he looks out the window and he's like, Hey man, what's the matter with you? Why are you just looking out the window? And he's like a ghost and he's in shock. And then he's like, Hey man, whatever you're thinking about doing, how about don't do it. Let's just talk this out. You've got a suspended license. You have somebody can pick up the truck. The guy's just staring out the window, blank stare on his face. All the indicators that something in that car is, is not right. He puts the car in drive and takes off after a chase. He gets out, shoots the police officer, police officer return fire and and shoot and kill him. So I don't think it's unreasonable. And I think every cop on every traffic stop, I mean, it's just common practice. I mean, even though, you know, the old lady doesn't have a firearm. If you're not going to do it for one, in my opinion, I like to do things the same way every time. If I'm drawing my pistol from a holster, it's muscle memory, man. I know exactly how that thing's coming out. I know exactly where it's getting punched. And, and we do it over and over again. So I'm always going to ask, hey, is there anything in the car I need to know? Do you have any firearms? Uh, it's just like when you're with somebody that's going to commit suicide. You should ask them, are you thinking about committing suicide? Yes. Because they will give you indicators if they are or they're not. Right. So looking for indicators, I don't think that is a left-wing nut you know, conspiracy, don't invade my rights. No, I think as a cop that's enforcing a law, and this is a great video um, that kind of shows you where I'm coming from. And look, I've, I've, I've had four friends get shot while I was on duty. So I, I, I've seen other friends of mine with bullet holes in them. I don't want any in me. And so call me a coward, call me afraid, call me all the things that you said about me all week. That's fine. I'll own those um, because this is exactly what I'm afraid of. Yeah. No, it's, this is a, it's a good training point. And also somebody did bring up a good point. And I, I actually made a note of this to talk about is, you know, our – our fearless and also clueless commander in chief right now, um, you know, Buck Buck Fiden, um, he is one who says, "Just shoot him in the leg, man. Come on, man. Just Come shoot on, him in man. the leg." And that's shoot exactly what happens in this situation. And all it did was end up uh, irritating the assailant, who then pulled a double ambush. Uh, limping around on one leg. So that's exactly why you don't just shoot him in the leg. So there's a lot of training points here. So uh, are you think we're cool to just like play that video real quick, Tansy? Yeah. So guys, if you beautiful. haven't seen this, you'll see it right now and then we'll, we'll play it and then we'll just kind of like start walking through it and uh, see where the conversation goes with it. Oh, you got no clue. Oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure that all right. I got maybe two, man. Huh? Okay. Shit! 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 I'm hit! I'm hit! John, Epic mag dump. 
Yeah, it gets my dick hard. Boom. So, wow, a lot happens. And how long was that clip? Yeah, like 90 seconds that'll change your life right there. <laughs> if, you, if you are those two deputies, that's a, that's a, well, if you're anybody watching that, that's like, man, you see how fast it goes from literally an officer, like you, you said, like trying to be a good guy, right? Like he's building his conversation, like, hey, I got, I got babies too. You know, like I got, he literally already told the guy that just as, is, is moments later going to be shooting this guy in the leg. Um, well, he tried to shoot him elsewhere, but he just sucks at shooting anyway. But, um, he, he's he's like literally I, I'm like you. He's trying to identify with this guy and say, yeah, I got I got babies too. Like I have kids. He just told him he's got kids. No one the the cops aren't being jerks about anything. And this guy was just hell bent on trying to end people's lives. I've said this on the show a few times, and I've gotten lit up for it a few times. And I'm glad that we're getting to to go into this video so I can kind of let the our viewers know where I'm coming from as a police officer, but. When you're working, especially in a high crime area, but I would even argue that if it's a low crime area, it should always be the same, right? Your tactics, you should always be ready to win. And, and mindset is so important. And we're getting away from this whole warrior mindset. Um, mm. We like to cheese on it. We like to make fun of other cops for having it. But when I, when I would approach a car and I, and I would deal with anything, I treated everybody the same. And your tone of voice can say one thing, but it's like acting, right? So I can steeple my fingers here, which... It's acting. This is an act. Me talking like this with my fingers steepled in front of my chest and talking to you empathetically is an act because what I'm really doing is I'm sizing you kind of up mm -hmm. and I have my hands in a great <clears throat> position to draw yeah. my weapon or to punch you in the face. Yeah. And I'm thinking of all the tons of ways that I can destroy you right now. But I'm also going to do things to look for indicators. And, and this is a training that every cop should – you should invest in your own training on indicator-based training. But you should ask those hard questions that are uncomfortable. That guy, hey, man, I see that you got a two-year-old kid. I mean, that's awesome. But his stance was a little bit off. He wasn't ready for a gunfight. Even when he got hit, you can hear it in his tone of voice. Oh, I'm hit. I'm hit. And, of course, that is a scary and terrible thing. Um, but it's because he was caught off guard. And I really don't think that he thought in that time he was going to be in the fight of his life. Whereas you got to get ready to go in every single day that you wake up as an officer, you need to know that this, that any stop could be the one, the guys who died in the sovereign citizen episode, they thought they were dealing with a preacher and a preacher's son and they were murdered. Both of them were murdered on yeah. the side of the road. I took a they... lot of flack. Um, <clears throat> I had a, a general Mattis saying, that's a pretty famous saying uh, attributed to him. Be polite, be professional, but have a plan to kill everyone you meet. Absolutely. And that was and on my locker at work. And when I, when I had those stickers and stuff, people that weren't cops, like not, my, my fellow officers didn't have a problem with that. But people who don't understand that mindset are like, so you're saying that cops do want to go out and kill people. And it's like, no, 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 we don't. We want to be polite and professional. That's what we want. But if we don't have the plan to be ready to handle business, when we have to, then we're a step behind. If this is, this is that mindset, right? Every time it doesn't matter if it's the grandma, it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't mean that you have to portray yourself as a jerk. Some, some cops are just a-holes for no reason because sure. they're, they're just being that way when it's not necessary to communicate like an a-hole, but you do all, every cop has to be ready and if you, if you, when you are suiting up in the locker room, are, are reminding yourself each and every shift, okay, this is, this is the la like, this is it in my mind. So for me at my locker, I was like, I, I was like thanking God for my family and my life up to that point. And like, I'm saying, I'm putting this stuff on and this might be it. And I'm going to go do my job. Like I'm ready. To, I'm ready for this. And then I, the last thing I would look at when I closed the door, be polite, be professional, but have a, have a plan to kill everyone you meet. And so I took that responsibility and I encourage all of you cops that are still on the road to take that responsibility and say, I have a plan because being a step behind the bad guy who already knew the bad guy already knows that he's got his weapon and he's formulating a plan. As soon as those lights flick on, He's formulating a plan, good or bad. And if you already anticipate 
I plan on this person. I plan that when these lights go on, this guy or girl or whoever's in this car could hop out and have weapons and be ready to put them on me. If I'm pulling somebody over with I'm already planning on that and then it doesn't happen, I'm winning. I'm ahead, you know? And so we have to put ourselves in positions of advantage before the traffic stop ever starts. And and that that's where I've always had a big problem with the way policing is going now because it's open-handed kindness, open-handed kindness with no plan to have an iron fist. Now, uh, all the credit for these officers. They did a great job. They stayed in the fight. Um, Absolutely. And they did exactly what they had to do. Uh, oh, they, they, they stayed in and they won. So, hey, they both, kudos, they did. kudos to these guys. Yeah, they didn't absolutely. give up. They, you know, I, what, the first thing I noticed, um, and if you don't think that, that gang members, if you don't think that thugs, if you don't think uh, any of the human beings that, that wish to do you harm aren't sizing you up as a cop, they're sizing you up every time. When you have that mustard stain on your shirt, those motherfuckers see that. And, and yep. these officers, I mean, this guy knew in his brain that he wasn't going to jail. And, and wow, what, what a fighter he was. Um, that guy was committed. He even took one in the leg and stayed in the fight himself. So this yeah. dude knew what he was doing that day. Um, and he went committed and he was, he was going to give it all his all. So these officers looked good. They looked sharp. Um, and, and that makes me, you know, that makes me feel good. I don't know that you could have looked any better and persuaded this guy to do anything different just based on your looks alone. I think the fight was always going to be there. Uh, however, I think, you know, in this instance, in this scenario, the fight, the only way this fight could have gone different is the officer, the young officer who had the gentleman out of the car. Um, there should have been a hard conversation about what was in the car right off of the bat, because I feel like that dude, he had nothing. He was not in that fight at all. As soon as that first shot was fired, that young man in the red shirt, he ran to that wood line faster. I, he probably broke records getting to that wood line. He was <laughs> yeah, the one that they, was that, they pieced out real quick. <laughs> he was. The one, he would have been the one that would have given you that indicator. Hey, man, is there any guns in that car? And when his head looks back, and he looks at you and says, "Um, now we know, right? Because we have an um." Yeah, and, and to be fair, to be fair to to this this whole situation, I literally have not watched. If there's more footage, which I'm sure I'm well, there definitely is more footage, right? right? Yeah. I I have no clue what the context of the conversation was up to this point. Sure. Were they waiting for? Because the dude, the dude who shall be only known as the turd. I was not going to say his name because screw him. <laughs> I don't know uh, his name. Like I think you pretty much have to be a piece of shit if your parents name you Paris and you're a dude. I mean, it's like being called Sue. You know what I mean? Like yeah, a boy named Sue. But that yeah, but that's too cool of a that's a Johnny Cash song, and I don't even want to give him that credit. This guy's just a freaking turd. This guy's a this guy's a hot steaming pile of turd, and now he's a dead turd, which is the best kind of turd. And Goodbye. Before, before we get into Good it, we're going to we're gonna talk about old Perry's uh, criminal record. We're going to talk about his past. We're going to talk about what the sheriff had to say. But first, we're going to uh, go with one more ad read really fast. Please don't fast forward through this because this is what keeps this shit wagon <laughs> on the road. Plus, fucking this is from a Navy SEAL. So, I mean, he's got that going for him. Uh, but uh, Heck you know, yeah, as, bro. as Mike was talking about earlier, um, your current supplements kind of leave you falling, uh, kind of feel you cashed out a little bit flat. We get it. There's supplements all over the place. What I really like about Carter Max and what I talked about at the beginning of the show is just kind of this like holistic approach to it um, where it's just the it's just exactly what you need. There's no extra additives. There's nothing not natural that's in these things. Uh, but life on the front lines um, and these guys were on the front lines. They require you to step up your game. Carter Max is owned and operated by former Navy SEAL Sean Matson and fellow drinking bro. He's been a drinking bro from the beginning, baby. Uh, but Cardo Max has designed just the right supplements for, for us as first responders, uh, for anybody that's in the game. Cardo Max Energy Intensifier uses the least amount of ingredients as possible. There's absolutely no junk in there to give you energy that you need to optimize your workouts or whatever else you need a boost for. Work, dealing with kids, some ungodly hour in the morning, driving, the long hauls, whatever it is, that energy intensifier is going to get you through it, man. Uh, Cardo Max will, be, it will keep you going. Uh, the energy intensifier comes in an easy to mix liquid packet and two great flavors, blue raspberry and pink lemonade. Pink lemonade is my favorite. It has B3, B6, B12 vitamins, caffeine, caffeine, BCAAs. Tastes great. The ingredients are healthy. It's made by a veteran and a drinking bro. And that's why we love Cardamax. We always support our veterans. We always support our fellow drinking bros. If you're a drinking bro, uh, and you've got a product. We're always going to support that. Uh, but it is a healthy pick me up. I love the little shaker cup that it comes in. Um, Cardamax is offering failure to stop an exclusive offer of 30% off of your next 
four orders. Go to cardomax.com and use promo code WOLFPACK. All capital Wolf letters. Pack. That is C A R D O M A X dot com. And please use that promo code Wolfpack and you will get 30% off your next four orders. And these orders are big. Um, you get a lot of packets in these orders. So you can use like one a day for a long time. That's cuttermax.com helping you achieve your max promo code Wolfpack. Oh, oh God. I hate it so bad. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> uh, so would you – so tactically speaking, I would – if I was by myself, I never got somebody out of the car ever. Everyone stayed in the car where I knew where they were at, and I would position myself uh, as best as I could until I had other officers there because I want the numbers to be – uh, better in my favor. Right. Yes. Um, and I also learned I, w- where I, I got a lot of people out of cars and put them in handcuffs and sit them on the side of the road too, like in situations like that one at a time with officers present. So I think these guys are in a County. I don't know the density of this, but I feel like overall, if you, for whatever reason, they're getting them out one-on-one back here, you've got the other guy, and in between, he's trying to kind of play double duty. Watch the guy at the back of the car. Watch the guy in the car. I, I don't know why everyone's out of the car versus being in the car, but are they maybe checking them for warrants or something like that? Um, well, I, mean, I want to go ahead and say just from seeing the car, and you got a guy in the back seat, uh, Mr. Perry, and Mr. Perry has a massive rap sheet, so Mr. he's Turd. probably rolling around. Uh, he's probably rolling around with two other turds that have just as much of rap sheet. Uh, these officers, these are good cops, right? They probably knew what they were pulling over, right? Uh, this looks like one of those stops. The way that the younger officer is kind of talking yeah. to the uh, gentleman, he's like, okay, you know, for, for me, it would have been um, this guy like Darius Welcher or or I think he's in prison for murder right now. But he was just one of these common dudes that when you saw his car rolling around, it always had a stop because he didn't have a license. And so you kind of knew <laughs> what you were dealing with. And to me, it kind of seems like, and again, it's just Monday morning quarterbacking. So please, if I'm wrong, this is just my perception, guys. That's what the show is all about is what my perception is. It kind of seems like he probably knew what he was getting into. And he was like, all right, these guys are pieces of shit. That's not a shocker. You you have a basic idea in the daytime of like what you're getting yourself. (laughs) Like, yeah, like this guy, he he doesn't have a license. I'm going to pull him over. He's probably got somebody in that car's probably got warrants. Let's just figure out what we got and let's try not to make anybody run. And and he and and Mr. Turd uh, did have warrants and he had his now. A lot of people hate when this gets brought up, and I think it depends on the context because sometimes it's like, oh, he has this past criminal history. Well, you you can't judge someone just on their past. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily impact the situation that they are in in the moment. Not necessarily. It doesn't, it doesn't follow logically that just because they did X in the past, they're doing it right now. It does, it's not like a if this, then that, but there is a sense of, this guy who's really to blame in the situation is, is Mr. Turd. He has to uh, own his own actions, but some wussy uh, labia faced judge somewhere let this guy out on bond. And one of his felon 23 felonies in the past was attempted murder. Like, and this dude's just roaming around with a two-month-old in the back of a car. You freaking morons. And people want to blame cops for the problems in our system. You, we need to start looking at people behind uh, these uh, – uh, on the bench, so to speak. Yeah, who are, talk, who, you know, you hear people talking about Derek Chauvin uh, grabbing 22 years um, for what he did. And, and, like, there is no justice – in, in racial <laughs> communities. I mean, come on, Dude, man. So- How many fucking chances does this guy get? 40 previous arrests. You know, let's just say like 20 of those arrests were bullshit. 17 like, were misdemeanors, 20. but they weren't they it wasn't oh, like uh unpaid unpaid ordinance fines violations. These are like armed robbery, attempted murder stuff. Yeah. And this guy's and then- out on bond like just roaming around. 
23 felony arrests to include robbery with a firearm, aggravated assault with a weapon, multiple narcotics offenses, battery of law enforcement. And by the way, these aren't added up from one case either. These are all separate charges and attempted first degree felony murder. At what uh, point does, does a judge go, you know what? You're not, you're bad for society. He's a registered <laughs> what point? career offender. He's a what? registered career offender. If you're registered as a career offender, where's the zero tolerance uh, and this guy knew that they're right? harder. Yeah. They are harder on drunk drivers, which is I'm not justifying yeah. drunk driving at all. Sure. I, I, it's terrible. You should not do it. You're a complete a hole if you're out there drunk driving. Don't do it. But but I've seen guys their lives completely shredded from trying to deal with the fallout of drunk driving, and this guy is a career criminal cruising around with his tur homies with a firearm. Shocker. Uh, trying to a kill firearm, people, man. A firearm ready to go. We're not talking about, uh, you know, Trailer Park Joseph with his uh, rifle hung in the back of his truck so everybody can see it with his rebel flag and his don't tread on me flag underneath that um, and his Marine Corps sticker that he got from a recruiter that he didn't join because he blew out his knee. Um, <laughs> this was a dude who's sitting in the back seat of his car with an AR style pistol, which is an, is basically a AR 15, uh, without a butt stock uh, and, and a shorter ish barrel. Uh, they call it an AR, an AR pistol, but it's, it's an, it's a AR 15, uh, a black rifle essentially. And, um, it's an assault weapon. It's an assault, <laughs> but I don't want, I don't want to be a left wing nut and call it an assault weapon. Piss off my don't tread on me's. So he's got his he's got this gun down between his seat and he's ready to rock and roll, baby, next to a two year old. Um, I was trying to figure out what two gang, month old, I think. Two, I'm sorry, two month old. And I'm trying to figure out what gang affiliation this guy has. Um, but when you type in gang affiliation and firearms, all you get is Chicago Mayor Lightfoot's article because <laughs> she just can't stay out of the mail. Uh, oh, out of she's the, uh, she's out of the, suing. She thinks the answer to gang violence is suing the gangs, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we'll get into that later. But um, I mean, this, so this, soft. A, this attack here um, is coming off of we, we've had two two hundred and sixty six cops died in the line of duty this far in twenty twenty one. And th that number is actually up now. It's it's I think it's at two sixty eight. Uh, but you had August 17th. Uh, Deputy Brent Chitwood was shot in the chest on a fucking traffic stop. OK, uh, then we have, of course, Chicago. PD uh, office uh, Ella French that was on August 7th on a traffic fucking stop. traffic stop. You've got this knucklehead shooting uh, officer. Um, uh, I forgot the officer's name that, that, that was shot in this incident, but that was on a traffic stop. Then you have officer Joe Burson of Holly Springs PD who was killed by being dragged by a motorist. I know that's not a shooting, but I mean, we have a lot of car stop involved shootings and murders on police officers. So for you to accuse me of being a coward or be afraid of going on a traffic stop and separating somebody from a gun, I think it is a tactic that is worth talking about. And I don't think that's a second amendment issue. I think that's a quality of life. And if you really do support police, if you really do support, um, you know, the, those guys who are trying to protect and those veterans, I don't think you should have a problem with saying, Hey, officer, will it make you feel better if I get out of the car and, and away from this firearm? I mean, I'm not a bad guy, but I could see why you would be nervous um, since, 266 of your homies have died this year uh you know yeah when you're like well why do you, why do cops got to be so like straight and narrow or or and this is we in a, in a personal conversation we had the, we talked about why troopers i mean they have the reputation of being a little bit more ha hard right like in terms of like their approach their demeanor everything about them is is a little bit more uh, down the line at, you know in in their approach but that's because they tend to have zero backup anywhere uh, that's in a reasonable distance. And they're constantly by themselves uh, in traffic stop situations, which are notoriously the most dangerous things that cops do. I mean, only to be followed by family troubles, domestic situations, like it's traffic stops and family troubles. These are like, these are the things that are, are you're constantly doing and engaging in, and they are the most dangerous. And usually troopers are, focused on just that traffic enforcement. And so it's a dangerous thing. I think it's um, a thing that citizens kind of forget very often when they watch the media or they watch the news and they see 
these videos, I mean, even if you're a veteran citizen and you have in the back of your head, well, I'm a veteran, I would do it this way and I would do it that way. But I think one of the, th the key points that you miss is enforcing the law. There is there is a fear that's always behind what you are doing. And it's not a coward. When you're stopping a car, just because it says the car belongs to Patsy Thelma, doesn't mean that Patsy that's, Thelma's driving the car. Patsy Thelma. That's my mom. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a stripper. That's a good old stripper name right there. Next to the stage. I don't Patsy. no, it was a magician did that to I my mom. So. He was like, next on stage, Patsy Thelma. Uh he's a funny guy. But um anyway, I, I mean you it, it might not be Patsy Thelma driving the car, it might be me. People don't understand that when you're walking up a long driveway by yourself as a cop and you can hear yelling and screaming inside, that there is there's an there's something that happens, adrenaline pumping, things are going on in your body, you're nervous, you are scared. And I would I would venture to challenge any of you hard asses out there you just don't know how that feeling is until you're in it i mean shit dude a foot chase can be kind of stressful when that dude takes off running from you you have no idea what's going to happen and, and your adrenaline goes through the roof and then you tackle the guy and you get him into handcuffs and you go back and you watch your tape and you listen to yourself and you're like damn i'm in really good shape but i was huffing and puffing a lot putting that guy Listen to myself on the radio. I sound like a fucking train wreck. I'm not a train wreck in real life. I'm a highly trained guy. I've had <laughs> combat experience. I sound like a fucking, you know, like I just ran a marathon because the adrenaline's going on, all these things. <sighs> <sighs> Dispatch. Get my get my car, get my cardo max. Get my cardo max. I, <laughs> I need an energy boost. Uh, you know, use but, code, use code Wolfpack. Wolfpack. <laughs> When you watch these tapes, you need to. Dude, I'm actually out of breath just doing that. I need. I know. <laughs> wow. You gotta, you gotta put that in the seeing back stars. Of your seeing stars. These cops go through. Uh, it's not that easy. And and I watched the Volusia County shooting with the the car, and those cops were cool, calm, and collected. And the dude drove off, and he hit some stuff, and they were just kind of laughing it off. And ten minutes later, they're getting in a shootout in the fight of their life. Um, but they were literally just laughing and joking. Ha oh, ha, that guy just drove off. There's nothing we can do about it. Oh, oh, oh. And then they come in contact with him 10 minutes later and, uh, and he's getting to work um, on their windshield. So, you know, be very careful when you watch these videos and kind of the things that you say, unless you've been there, unless you've been right in that situation alone by yourself um, or two, a two versus three kind of scenario. Yeah. The, somebody made a comment earlier about one of the guys that ran away, the guy in red shorts, you know, like, kind of like legend has it. He's still running to this day. <laughs> like he's still, he's still going. He's still, he's just running toward the end of the flat earth. He's go, he gone. Uh, but yeah, so this guy emerges and he recognizes like, um, I don't know if he was waiting to be told to step out of the car. Like he was just waiting for his moment because he gets asked to step out and then he's like, all right, it's go time. And the cop sees that gun, right? His, he has his literal oh shit moment because that's exactly what he says. It's like, oh shit. Um, and he, he starts bailing toward the back of the car to draw his weapon. And then it's game on. And honestly, fortunately for these cops, this guy was, this guy was terrible at executing his plan. I mean, really bad. He's holding the gun. He, he's a terrible knowledge of firearms. All he knew is from Boys in the Hood. That's all he's got, and so fortunately, he, he didn't train. <laughs> that's a great point because he had great mindset, but no training. Yes. The other officer in that moment had poor mindset, but great training. Yeah. Um, he reloaded on the run. He dropped mag and reloaded. A lot of people are saying these guys need more training. I'm like, Ooh, actually, you I, know, like. You know what? That that spawned so fast uh, that, you know, and, and a, a sim round scenario will fix any of those knuckleheads. Getting a Cimarron scenario and start popping off Cimarron. Yeah, uh, this the, guy immediately recognized the threat, moved to a cover, start, began to move to a position of cover while drawing his firearm, immediately addressed. He shot the guy. He returned fire and sh he got hit and he returned fire and hit the guy. So there is there's an exchange happening. And keep in mind that there's people running in his path of fire immediately. There is there's a lot happening. He knows that there's. Old? There's a, there's a child in the vehicle. Um, he gets hit. What does he do? He has, if he's going to reload, you're trained to reload from a position of cover where it, where it, when at all possible. And so he moves to the back of the vehicle. And I think this was a smart tactic. 
he didn't reemerge once he reloaded where he was. He reemerged on the other side of the vehicle. Now the, the, the turd had moved behind him. And so it was a weird circumstance how that happened. But I think the, the first officer that gets shot, he actually, and I believe that was Potter's Brian Potter's that is shot. I think, uh, if I'm wrong, I'm, I apologize. I get the names mixed up, but he, he actually decides to move to the other side of the vehicle. Yeah. What can, so I think that's actually a good tactic. And then the second officer who realizes that a uh, hop along turd turdity comes, comes along from around the backside of the, the patrol vehicle. He sees it happening, pops off around. And it looks like, again, I, I I'm, I'm, I'm watching the same thing you guys are. It looks like he inadvertently dumps his mag out of the gun, like the, the convulsive grip. He slides down the mag drops. He recognizes it, but instead of panicking, moves, does exactly what you're supposed to do. He moves real quick to cover, reloads his mag, reemerges again on the other side to address the threat, and then epic guns mag up, dump. giddy up, mag dump Fucking. for America. I bet his dick was so fucking hard when he was putting those in him. Like he was like, yeah, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure it turned sexual uh, at that point, but it certainly uh, was um, uh, an America moment. Yeah. I mean, uh, so, you know, every cop, we, we go through these sim round trainings. We go through lots of trainings, being in the military, went through lots of training. And a lot of times in training, you lose because the instructors kind of set it up for you to, to, to be very, very difficult. And so, you know, I always picture in my brain when we have these shooting incidents at work or we're doing things is having that moment of, OK, the last guy's down and I've won um, yeah. my, my best friend and, and the god godparent of my children and the godparent of his children. Um, he, he was in a shooting and, and he won. And it was such a celebration of life. And him and I, we celebrate his alive day, but we really celebrate it as congratulations. You fucking won the fight of your life. And that's what he told me after the fight. He was like, look, dude, like I people are telling me I should feel one way. I should feel the other. And all I feel is like, fuck yeah, dude, I fucking won. Like you brought your gun, you brought your heat and I pulled mine first. And, and or he, he didn't even pull his firearm first. The suspect had his gun out before he did, but he still won the fight, you know, and he had this overwhelming sense of victory and mm-hmm. winning. And these officers, they fucking won and, and they should celebrate that they won that this was the fight of their life. And they came out on top and it was definitely because of their training um, their training kicked in. I'm uh, extremely proud of these guys and would definitely serve with either of the two of them. And, and then he stayed in the fight, dude. He not only was he shot in the leg, he got the uh, freaking uh, pistol whipped <laughs> in the noggin yeah. and, and still he, stayed in the fight. Like fight, trying. win, go home. This and is this is the mantra, right? And I, I love have, it because his mindset going in there was like, I'm trying to be a good, cool officer. Like, I'm not judging you because you've got dreads and a shitty criminal record. You got your two-month-old in the car, man. Like, hey, listen, man, I've good, been there. Bro. I've had like, 23 I've felonies. There. I've tried to kill people before, and I'm yeah. out walking around just like you. He's desperately trying. We saw this in the Rashard Brooks breakdown. He's desperately trying not to be a viral video and trying to be nice and kind and courteous and doing all the things, all the things that, that we're trying to get these cops to be. And he kind of just had his guard down just a little too much. But listen, he gets right back into the fight. He gets his gun out. He gets shot. I like it when that when he gets shot, he's like, I'm hit, I'm hit, ow, I'm sure it hurt like like hell. Uh, oftentimes when you get shot in the leg, bones do break. Um, but he did hit suspect in the leg. Uh, and the suspect, he had the mindset of, I'm, I'm in this to win it, baby. He's like, I'm going to run. No, fuck that. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make it because I've been shot in the leg, so I'm going to get back to work on these guys. Um, but he, the officer that got shot was like, I'm hit, I'm hit. Now, at that point, he could have moved to the back of the car and sat it out. But he didn't. He went to the other side of the car. Just depend on his partner. On the pillar. Yeah, he could have. But he went to that. I, I, at that point, it's like the C pillar because that was like an SUV. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. he goes to a pillar, right, of cover. He And, and by the way, you've been shot. It, all, your emotions are just through the roof at this point. Uh, your, your, brain, your tunnel vision is so pinpointed. I bet you that guy couldn't see three inches out of his peripherals. I mean, his, what do you think, what do you think was happening when he started firing rounds down range? As soon as he, does you think he just like in his mind, like he just went right where the target was last and just started popping rounds toward like where the threat was. I mean, you think in your brain, you're going, 
one, he's trying to process that he's been hit. Two, he's trying to process a reload. Um, and a reload is not easy. Oh, adrenaline, my gosh. Adrenaline uh, goes up. Your fine motor skills go down. And I don't care how much you practice it. And the way to prove that is, is have a shooting competition with your buddy um, and, and get you two of the guys together and put three rounds um, in three different magazines and just try sprint. to race. How about you win. sprint a quarter mile and do 50 push-ups and then start sure. doing mag changes? You but idiots. even then it's just like people who are like, Oh, I, w- I would have done uh, this. I would have been sleeping yeah. on my ghost bed and drinking Cardo max and mag changing with one hand and fighting these yeah. three turds. Oh, yeah. You no, freaking you dummy. No, you wouldn't. And, yeah. And, and, and I don't care how many mag changes you do on your, your, your couch and, and how many times you've cleared your house that that doesn't put you, you don't train under stress. You're situation. not training. So shut up. And and <laughs> training under stress takes a lot of money and a lot of time. And so there's yeah. just not an overt, there's not a massive amount, but I, I would take any hardened veteran and put them in the same scenario. And, and I'm not sure that it plays out. There's, and there's no, truly, there's no way to simulate that real, kind of real death. Even, even when you're going into sim round things, which is, you know, c- circumstances and scenarios where it's, it's about as real as it truly can possibly get without the real risk of death. The problem is, you know, there's somewhere in your brain, you know, this isn't real, but when it's, right. when it's actually real, it, I mean, it's a different ball game. It's a different circumstance. Now, once you've been in those real situations, it actually starts to enhance your training because now you can kind of carry with you that feeling and those emotions and that reaction and carry it with you into your training. And you kind of, you kind of relive it a little bit, those tense moments, and it actually enhances your ability to get better at your training. Right. Cause you got to think through it and you kind of war game it. I mean, it's, it's like a quarterback on his first game coming out of college into the big leagues, into the NFL. Uh, That quarterback is going to have probably not that great of a game. Maybe he has a good game, but, he's going to get so much better over time because he's going to war game those things. He's going to, you know, he's going to understand what these blitz formations look like and how these things come. And unfortunately in scenarios like this for the officers, you may only get one chance. Yeah. Uh, this officer's career may be over. Um, we don't know where that, I don't know where that bullet struck. I mean, if it's shattered his knee, he, he I think the not, sheriff said he's supposed to know, make a, make a recovery. He's going to be fine. Which recovery. Is great. And we're going to get into what the sheriff has to say. Um, yeah. But first I, I want to talk dude. about uh, one of our newest endorsers or one of our newest sponsors to the show, uh, Simply Safe. And this is big for us because Simply Safe is a really big sponsor. I'm actually really excited podcasts. about this. Uh, and they they sent me um the the box of of Simply Safe stuff for my house, right? And I'm like, oh man, this is amazing. So my son comes in and he's like, Where did you get the Simply Safe stuff? And I'm like, well, uh, from Simply Safe. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah, they're gonna sponsor the show. And he's like, dude, he's like this is great. Yeah. And then like other people are like, simply safe. I got, sim- I, I've got friends that got simply safer. This is, they love it. Like Baba. I'm like, Oh, uh, great. I can't wait to get this installed at my house. I'm like, sweet. I'm like, I'm pretty excited now. Simply safe. <laughs> I got mine and I got, they sent it to us um, beginning of last month um, so that we could test them out and try them before we talked about it on the show. And I'll be honest, fully transparent. Uh, I did not set that fucking thing up because I hate setting shit up. I hate drilling <laughs> into my walls. You have to go get the drills. You have to go get all the little, you know, the level out and all these things. And all that stuff is either at my distillery or at my studio. And, and just for whatever reason, I didn't want to do it. And finally, I was like, all right, look, you know, that shows in a couple of weeks. I've got to get the Simply Safe stuff up. I opened the box. Dude, how fucking dumb am I? They actually put like adhesive on, they have a- adhesive strips. So that you can literally tape the stuff to your wall. <laughs> right, yeah, you, you, you don't have to even drill it. You don't it have in. to do it. It's, like, it's, actually, just, it's super simple. <laughs> I could have just it's opened it. It's simply like, safe. It See, that's built into the name. Built into safe. The name. But uh, this is big news. Um, and there's more, even bigger news coming from hey, Home Karen Security. says she loves her Simply Safe. So there you oh, go. Good. There you go, Karen. Simply Safe just launched their new wireless outdoor security camera. That's right. Simply Safe, the system that US News. And World Report names best home security system of 2021 just got even better. This brand new outdoor security is engineered with all the advanced tech and security features you want and need to help keep you and your family safe. It has an ultra wide 140 degree field of view so you can keep watch over your entire yard. 1080p HD resolution, eight times zoom. Uh... That means that you can zoom in and clearly means see I'm going to catch that porch pirate, like you, yeah, little, it's, it's, you little turd. It's not like the uh, security system that you see at the, the handy Hugo. You think you're going to take my teddy bear with a bra and a lay and butt plugs from my, no, from my porch? Not today. 
It's funny because of the quality on this. Like, if you look at the security cameras that they had at the Pentagon on 9-11 and you could barely see the plane coming in, <laughs> yes. like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I've got better technology, security camera technology in my home from Simply Safe than they, they had at the Pentagon. Yeah. Um, but it is built in spotlight with color night vision so you can keep an eye on what's going on day and night. Super simple to set up and usually just takes minutes. And I'm, dude, not even joking. This is like me. And it's, it's like setting up... Um, like your Alexa, it's 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 basically like you have like a little Alexa station. I mean, it's Big Bird of Cookie Monster. Uh, the camera has all it in tech, uh, integrates with Simply Safe home security systems, extending its protection to the outside. So now you have uh, Simply Safe inside, and you can have it outside. Um, every door, window, room protected. As a police officer, that's what you want. The budget for Simply Safe is right there in the first responder budget. I promise you. Um, and it gives you that peace of mind that your wife and your kids or your husband and your kids is everybody's at home and, and they're safe while you're on night shift. So or your husband and your husband, your husband, your husband, your wife and your wife <laughs> to learn more about the exciting new simply safe wireless outdoor security camera, visit simply safe.com slash wolf pack. Um, and that is all lowercase. This time. <laughs> there it is. See, it's fun. No, it's uh, what's more simply safe is celebrating this new camera by offering 20% off your entire new system. And your first month of monitoring service free when you enroll in an interactive monitoring. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash Wolfpack. Hey, guys, guess what? Also with Simply Safe is you don't have to subscribe to anything. These are things that you can watch off of your own phone. So there is no like monthly um, fees and prices if you don't want it on Simply Safe. So that somebody is super ban- dope. Somebody ban Fruit Dragon. He's telling us that 9 11 is not real. You freaking turd. <laughs> uh, Idiot. Freaking idiots, man. Idiots. Stop it. Stop it. Just stop it already. <laughs> Simplysafe.com slash Wolfpack. Uh, and again, I love it. I, it's great. And and it's cool because I can spy on my own house from my phone. It's kind of addicting. Um, <laughs> Boston Joe, you're at my house way too much. When yeah, I'm what's there. up with that? What's going on, buddy? Yeah. Anyway, no one's going to steal my butt plug shipment anymore from the porch. <laughs> <laughs> no more. <laughs> All oh, right. Man. So Sheriff Wayne Ivy is a freaking monster. He's the kind of leader we need, dude. Uh, what is it with sheriffs in Florida? What is it with Florida in general? They, I'll tell they're you, on, which, they're be- they're on a they're on a common sense tear, top down, man. When like I'm- just a common sense, freedom loving terror and i love it i love it man i I wish i could move to freaking florida but it's a lie it's not a sunshine state it's got worse weather than michigan it is being from florida right i was born and raised in st augustine florida in a little town called switzerland and you have got to be tough as shit to be from florida is like australia right so you have you have moccasins gold snakes (laughs) you've got alligators alligators alligator snapping turtles barracudas sharks hurricanes casey anthony casey anthony <laughs> um, hurricanes tornadoes <laughs> drug cartels it, drug cartels you get it Cubans. All in florida you've got to be on the top of your fucking game to live in florida um you got to deal with all the yankees who are driving down the highways in florida all the tourists that have no idea what they're doing where they're going everything about florida wants to kill you it's like jurassic park um so yeah i mean there's no wonder that the sheriffs in it's a dangerous swamp florida down there my friends <laughs> shout out to all of our florida florida officers out there heck yeah guys guns up giddy up to all florida law enforcement we love you guys uh and sheriff wayne ivy had pretty much the coolest line ever about our turd in question today do we have that somewhere andy uh there'd be no doubt this individual got exactly what he deserved amen and to brother. those out there who might be foolish enough to ask why we shot him so many times that answer is simple because evil can never be dead enough. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh, please run, run. Can, I can love we the have, smug look on his face. Like he's take not that even... guy, put him everywhere. I want, I want that guy leading all law enforcement agencies. I, I love it. I, I think he's, I, I like the smugness on his face when he's saying it. He's like, I'm about to piss off all the media people in here. My social media is about to blow up. The Brevard County Sheriff's Department social media is about to just get freaking raided with scumbags. And I don't give a fuck. Uh, <laughs> I don't mind getting put on the map for killing turds. Yeah, I love it, man. And, and his his uh, brother down the street, the other sheriff down there, who's you know saying, why didn't we shoot him? Why did we shoot him 126 times? And he's like, Bolstered. That's all, that's we need a there. shirt. We need a shirt. Evil can't be dead enough. Oh, yeah. 
Evil King. Yeah, we definitely need that. Evil can't be dead enough. I will wear the the heck out of that shirt. I love it. Evil can't oh. be dead enough. Get yourself a stab and grab, and then an evil can't be dead enough shirt. The failure to stop dot com. And for all you <laughs> breachers out there, hit up that breach life. It's all about that breach life. I'm all about that. Fuck yeah, the man. Beach. Fuck the beach. Give me the breach. So, uh, Sheriff Ivy, kudos to you, sir. I if I was going to go back into full time law enforcement then I would move to Florida or whatever department you were in charge of. And I would, I would work for you, sir. Uh, you have my respect. You could be terrible at HR stuff. I don't know. I mean, maybe people have complaints about you. Everybody complains about their leaders. Uh, but at the end of the day, this, this, uh, you got my support from this for sure. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. That is awesome. Oh gosh. Um, man, yeah, this- and how proud of you, you, you know, cause these sheriffs and, and higher, ranking officials it's good to see a sheriff like this being proud of his men right yeah if you're that if you're if you're this if if you're this deputy sitting in the hospital with your freaking leg yeah and you hear your sheriff like yeah man in your brain you're going in your brain you're like man that mag dump was awesome but how fucked am i for that mag dump like what what am i gonna have to answer then you're sitting in the hospital and those things are running through your brain and then all of a sudden did i shoot him too many times he couldn't be dead enough you're like oh shit i got my state side i did it with a full fucking mag dump fuck yeah dude uh i'm in it i'm in it to win it let me get back to work and uh, i'm ready for the next one if, if if it so happens um which is a great approach it's the opposite approach of our good old friend Mary, Mayor Lori Lightfoot. Old Lori. Oh, Lori Back Lightfoot. in it again. Look, this one can't stay out of the news. Beetlejuice um, loves to be in the news. She can't stop. She's the mayor with the most, babe. Now, I, I want to talk about it. Do I, do I think this is a, a, terrible, a terrible idea? In theory, no, I don't. Suing gang members and going after the top-ranking gang members, I think, is a great idea. Uh, in theory, right? There's a lot of there's a lot of ideas that are in theory, but if you you look at them and break it down, and I'm not making fun of Mary Lori Lightfoot for just being ignorant because we can all be ignorant in things that we don't have enough information about. So I'm not going to shit on her too much for saying that we should sue um, gang members, but I'm going to tell you why that's not going to work, and then I'm going to tell you what her, arti- her 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 motive was in saying this, which it wasn't just some mayor that's really cares about her city saying you know what i have a good idea maybe it's a good idea maybe it's a bad idea let me hear it no she had ulterior motives but you can't just sue gang members you you can you can sue anybody that you want but now (laughs) what we're talking about is all of these gang incidents one we've changed in chicago and the policy in chicago is is that you're not allowed to put their gang affiliation in the report right because that's um it's criminalizing them inflammatory it's inflammatory and so you can't even put what their gang affiliation is so now we're saying okay, you can't well, you I, can't you can't establish facts about someone yeah that'd be that'd learn? be too mean right and they know and that's longer, how these freaking turds end up in the back of a car with a two-month-old shooting cops because right. you're freaking spineless gutless well, like I called them earlier, labia faces, labia faces, labia faces. So yeah. in the prison, they're allowed to still verify gang members for prison purposes, but the street level cops aren't allowed to have verified gang members. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, and there's no, there's, there's absolutely no reason for that ex- ex- except to piss off polit- politicians playing with the killer. Like, well, guess what? We're going to take away uh, the ability for cops to verify gang members. Ha. Huh. Take that, you know, um, there, there's no tactical reason or community policing reason that you would you would want to do that. But in this instance, if, if one, how do we articulate a gang related crime if we're not allowed to say that they're a verified gang member Two, um, the amount of litigation that would go into this? You're talking every crime that's every shooting, which there are lots of shootings in Chicago. We're now going to have to get that. Uh, we're going we're to have to articulate that that was gang affiliated without affiliating anybody with a gang. This just gives the DAs, uh, the defense, so much ammo to fight any one of these cases. And the time, because we're canceling court because of COVID, they're letting felons go because of COVID. There is no way that anybody was ever going to successfully be sued for being top leadership and blood gang members. And that is why this idea Mm -hmm. will flop. And she knew that would flop. She's not stupid. Posturing. She, She is just coming out and saying, look, we did something. We tried something. We tried it. Look what I'm doing. Because 
ignorance is bliss and the common person's like you know what that is a good idea yeah fuck those blood gang members sue all of them well that's great how are you going to do that and <laughs> what is the time frame coming on that you know who's going to pay for it so at the end of it the goes day, back to it goes back to just keep just keep posturing just say the right things yeah uh address symptoms never address the real problem don't go after the heart of the actual issue of personal responsibility or making holding people accountable hold hold turds accountable for the smell that's emanating from them how about we do that your honor or right. highness or whoever you are in, in any type of position to do this hold them accountable how about we maybe draw a line that goes i don't know somewhere around a dozen violent felonies with weapons we might want to keep you out of the general public for a while sure you know like Maybe that would be a good idea, but God forbid we do that because it's not very nice, and God forbid that we offend the Karens in the name of of tolerance, but it's okay to offend, I don't know, cops and other people who want peace and law and order in their society so that they can enjoy their freedoms. Uh, If anyone's seen Amber's shirt, uh, let us know uh, where it's at so we can get it to her. Uh, Listen, just got the shirts. She missed the first part (laughs) of the show again, but all the shirts came in. Uh, I got a big box of them, so I'll be able to mail it out uh, probably yeah, one day. Supposedly. Allegedly. I, they just came in. I'm wearing one right now. Yeah, I'm wearing one too. The stab and grab. I love it. Yeah, I, um, so the you know, Andy is the one that puts up the comments. So somebody's like, Who is is Jimmy back there putting up the comments? Uh Andy is is running the show today, uh pr- production wise and, and putting up the comments for you. Um so what what other thoughts do you have or not have about Here's, this situation or things like it um, that we we can educate people on or encourage well, I want to go back with? to the Lori Lightfoot news. Um, <clears throat> oh. Give my solution there because I I don't like to just bitch without having a solution or without having my own idea. And again, I said her idea wasn't bad in theory. I just think that her motives were she knew that it was bad in theory. I don't necessarily think that my idea is bad because it's been tried and it's been tested and it's worked. And the only reason that this method of policing has been gotten rid of is because of perception. And of course I always preach perception is not reality, Mm -hmm. even though we treat it as reality, but as a cop, you cannot treat perception as reality. And I think if you're going to judge cops as well on the citizen sides, then you can't judge them based off perception. So if you were in those shoes, you know, this how Salem witch trials happen uh, or things that, like perception and not facts and not evidence. So cops on dots is a method that a lot of agencies have used in the past. And that's basically is you take a map and you break it down into sections and wherever you have the most dots are for crime related. Like let's say that you have car break-ins and and you just have a massive rash of car break-ins. And, and then you also have a, a, a big problem in violent crimes and another neighborhood in an area. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the majority of your police officers and you're going to divide them to where those dots of crimes happens in the time frames that they happen. So if you've got 30 car break-ins that happen between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m., then at 2 a.m. and 5 a.m., you're going to take all your cops that have no dots in their area at 2 and 5 a.m. And you're going to leave one or two behind and you're going to take the majority over to the one that has a fuck ton of dots. And you're going to patrol the shit out of that between that time frame to get those crime numbers down. And you're going to do the same thing in everyone. But powers that be, big government, your mayors, your governors, they say, well, that doesn't look bad because now that's. Now that's we're bad. targeting communities. Now we're targeting communities. No, we're targeting, no, we're targeting criminals. Yeah, we're targeting crime. These dots don't have a color of. When you're going to pick up dog crap erased. in your yard, you take the shovel to the crap. Right. That's how and you scoop it up and get nothing. it out of your yard racist about this has nothing to do with those dots don't represent a color of human being they they don't represent how much a human being makes monetarily and a living these dots simply represent a crime that was committed and the location and time in which it was committed crime is colorless cops on dots if you want to make a community safer it's a no-brainer it has worked in tons of agencies the only reason that these agencies are getting rid of cops and dots is because of perception and I just don't agree with that. And so we already know the answer. And that's why I've said from the beginning is these politicians don't want that problem to be solved because then they don't have a job anymore. As long as these problems exist. I want to take ice cream on dots. I want to take them all ice cream to the, all the dots. Do Dippin' Dots. What's your take on Dippin' Dots? I'm a huge Dippin' Dots guy. Overrated. Overrated, I love no, bro. No, no, no. They're good. I love They're them. good. If I'm going to a sporting They're overrated, event. overrated, though. 
if I'm going to a sporting event, I they're want overpriced at the sporting events or like freaking um, amusement parks and all that stuff. Yeah, no, I, I, oh. I boycott that stuff. I hate it. I don't want to spend the extra money because I think they're they're fleecing me and I don't appreciate it. They're treating me like an idiot and I don't appreciate it. I won't buy. I won't. I won't buy your overpriced ice cream uh, dots because you're uh, there. You're charging me five times as much as you need to, and that's fine. It's your business. I'm not telling you how to run it. I'm just not going to support it. And All they're right. overrated. I, I, I'm a big Dippin' Dots guy. Uh, I had some at the Mudcats baseball game here in North Carolina. It was my youngest son's birthday. He wanted to go to a baseball game. Hey, sports. And I got everybody Dippin' Dots, and it was my my children's first time having Dippin' Dots. They love them. They They're great. My, it's, a classic kid, like you, it's a classic kid thing. You got to have Dippin' Dots. I, I, I agree. I, I'm not anti Dippin' Dots. My wife is anti Dippin' Dots. She's like, oh, it's the dumbest thing ever. It's not even real space. Like, how is it the future of ice cream when it's been the future of ice cream since 1983? <laughs> we haven't got um, there yet. It's still, it's still you know, the, the, the fastest thing, the, the, the furthest technology we have. So I, I like Dippin' Dots. I don't know if they really have them in space or not. Um, but if I could have Dippin' Dots in space, I think that would Our be Our Space a, Force will have item. the best Dippin' Dots. I uh, watched another great movie this week. Um, if anybody hasn't seen it, it was a it was a weird movie. I don't know how I I landed on it, but Warsaw Forty Four is a great movie. Um, mm. It's all in, in Polish, Polish subtitles. It is, and it it's uh, in subtitles. But man, what a fantastic breakdown of what happened in nineteen forty four in Warsaw. I did not know it was that involved, but it was really cool seeing communities come together. These weren't warriors, these weren't fighters, but they said enough's enough. We're not going to take the Nazis bullshit anymore, and and they came together. And it, and, and I think it's one cool. And I, I fact check the story but at one point there's a famous picture of uh, a couple of males a couple of females um, of all different ages and they're holding this concrete block in front of a bunch of rubble and i was looking at it and the story goes that these guys were like we have no idea what this rubble is and and one dude was like hiding behind it and laying waste to some nazis and like some ladies running by and he's like, come on over here. Come on. So she starts shooting. And he's like, we're going to hold this. And she's like, okay. And then another guy's like coming out of the rubble. And they're like, come on over here. We're going to hold this. And everybody just decided to hold this one piece of concrete because it was the only thing standing. There was no military significance. There's nothing about it. They were just like, we're going to fucking hold this because we're Polish and we hate the Nazis. And we're, you know, we're making our 53 days. We're going to mag dump some Nazis. We did, man. And even the Nazis were like, dude, what's so important about this block of concrete that these Polish people are rallying around? And it wasn't. It was just simply one guy was like, you know what? This is important to us. It's the only thing standing. And we're going to fucking save it. Uh, it was a really cool movie and really well made, well done. Um, people should to finish. Those people really should good. legit pay attention to how Poland has has dealt with massive refugee criminal element immigration stuff over the last few years and how Poland responds to all of the tyrannical bull crap that our government tries to pull because they've been there. They recognize the signs and they're like, Nope, uh, uh-uh, we ain't doing that again. We're not doing that again. And, yeah. uh, they're, they're onto something, the polls. And the, and the Polish resistance flag is really fucking cool. Um, I hope that makes a comeback. I was taking a look at it. I was like, no, that's a resistance flag. I like it. Man, I gotta. I'm I'm all so, excited now. I'm excited. To, I'm gonna watch that movie this go weekend. Watch movie. Go, and, and look, I I don't, I'm not really into movies with subtitles. I like Apocalyptico. That was pretty cool. But this movie is so good that like you don't even need the subtitles. You can kind of see what's going on and 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 you know cinema wise and the camera angles and all those things that are artsy fartsy are so good and, and it really keeps everything relevant. But it tells a really great story and um it, it seemed very accurate to me. Um, you know, you didn't have any like crazy heroes going full Rambo or anything like that. So, um, Tansy voted for Hillary Clinton. Tansy's very much a liberal. <laughs> you motherfuckers. Uh, but we love you guys. We love the Wolf Pack, man. For all of you guys who keep commenting on our stuff, that send us these private messages that are reaching out to us, um, sharing our social media, engaging ah, in the comments, dude. sharing the stuff, ratings, reviews, getting merch. Uh, spreading the word about the show. I, I honestly, we, all we can do is say thank you. Uh, and we're just going to keep showing up week in and week out and do our thing. Uh, if you have show uh, concepts, topics, situations, not current or past, and and you're like, man, let's talk about this. Uh, we want to give you guys, you know, the the opportunity to share that. So always send us a message and say, I'd love to hear about, uh, you know, X, Y, or Z, and we'll definitely consider it and try to kind of get it into the rotation of things. So. Just some dude says, dude, I used the show to help teach my class. I don't know what class that is. Uh, could be liberal dance studies, uh, lesbian, lesbian so, dance studies. And, somebody, uh, somebody in the comments says, Tansy poops standing up. And I meant to write, <laughs> I, 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 I'll poop on your girl's chest. And what I accidentally wrote was, I poop on girls. <laughs> oh my God. Stop it. Get that off my screen. It's disgusting. Oh Man. Uh, no, uh, hey, listen, all those pictures that you guys keep sending of the merch, I 
I love them. And um, I'm going to start doing like a collage maybe every Sunday of all the merch that's being worn um, because I think it's great. And, and I, I, I'm bad about responding just because, again, I run a business. Um, I, I run two side businesses. I have two podcasts. Same. Yeah. You, you've got all the same <laughs> things going on, Mike. You've got the Mike, the Cop YouTube thing. I got drinking bro sports, tailgate legends. And, and look my day I have, and I have three kids plus one on uh, uh, a new niece that was just born. And so my life is just full right now. And I, and I have very little time to myself. So I apologize. But every time I do see those pictures of you guys in the swag, it makes me smile. I love it. It's cool to see all our designs that, that we kind of collaborated together to make. So thank you. Thank love you. And catch your, catch your show tonight. Are you, on, are you on tonight or no? Is it, you don't do the Friday things right no, now during tailgate uh, season. It'll be Saturday. Yeah, so we're tailgating tomorrow at UNC. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Tomorrow we're at NC state university uh, tailgating there. That show will kick off at one. If you want to find us in the tailgate lot, just go follow drinking bro sports. And then next week we will be in Nashville. So I'll probably be doing our show on Friday and then driving straight to Nashville and I'm doing the game on Saturday, which is Vanderbilt, Georgia. And Sunday we're doing the Titans thing. And then we've got a thing with drinking bros uh, with kid rock and uh, John Daly and the drinking and the uh, black rifle crew on Monday. So follow drinking bros, follow drinking bros sports. So much happening. So, so much, much going on. And then you and I have cop week coming up. Yeah. Police week. We'll, we'll be there. Uh, we still got to work out details. I got to get airfare, set this all up. We got to figure it out. But yeah, we will be at Police Week in some way, shape, or form, some location. We will announce all the details as soon as we have them to you. I would say, I, I probably said last Friday, by this Friday, I lied. It'll be by next Friday, whatever. Uh, little little procrastination going on with, uh, with scheduling, but uh, we will get there. Uh, but guys, thanks so much. Uh, Failure to Stop podcast. Thanks for listening. And yeah, guns up, giddy up, share up the the, the show. And until next time, uh, next Friday, we'll see you here. Boom. Cheers.